What's up guys, we're here and today I'm gonna to give you some tips on how you can get through the Path of Exile campaign. Let's do it. So one of the first things that it comes to the campaign that I was advised on getting is called a loot filter. So a loot filter is something you can have in the game which allows you to basically filter out loot and get rid of all the bad stuff. Big shout out to Neversync here. I'm gonna reference him. The link will be down in the description below for this general loot filter. This is a very general loot filter for all of the items in the game. But what this does is allows us to go through and just filter out all of the quote unquote bad loot or loot you wouldn't necessarily need for your character in the game. And as you can see, like when I go up in loot filters, items disappear. Now you can press Alt <clears throat> and it'll highlight the items and you can see that they're different colors. If I go through and change this back to regular softcore, you can see that now this one's a like a teal while these are gray. If we pick these items up, you can just see that this one is almost magical because it has a implicit on it. And this was just a normal item, right? So a loot filter is really is what's gonna help you kind of get through all the bad loot in the game. You're not gonna be picking up extra loot. One thing that I can't advise enough is that when you're going through the game, I know that there's a lot of items that drop on the ground from all of the, you know, the monsters, but you don't need to pick up every single item. I would definitely 100% advise, see another Driftwood Club, picking up items that are particular to your character. For example, I'm playing a Ranger bow build. So I'm looking for bows, quivers, and then obviously all of our other gear pieces, right? Gloves, boots, belts, chest piece, you know. But I don't need to pick up a club. A club isn't gonna help my character. Now, in the beginning of the game, you, you may not find a bow and a quiver. You may have to wait till you find it, get through a little bit, or when you get to your very first town. So speaking of items particular to your build, next is having a good build. Now, there's a lot of different builds that you can use as a league starter, or when you're just starting in Path of Exile, going through the campaign. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's gonna make it a little bit easier, and there are a bunch of leveling builds and starters. Shout out to Max Roll here for having a very, very good website. I really like Max Roll. There's definitely a lot of other build guides and lists out there, but I think this is just a very good one uh, for just having a baseline of builds, right? So under build guides, under league starter, these are leveling builds and league starters that you can do. I started with lightning arrow and I transitioned into tornado shot. There's a lot of very, very strong builds here based on whatever class and play style you would like to play. There's Maul, which is like a minion based build. The Toxic Rain, Ice Shot, these are all ranged builds. Then you have Explosive Arrow. Bone Shatter is a melee build, Corrupting Fever. You got Bone Shatter Juggernaut, which means you're just basically a huge tank and you're just doing a crap ton of damage. You got Raging Spirit Guy, which is kind of like a minion build in a way. But you have a lot of different options here to kind of just pick from. Now there's definitely some other ones besides these that you can use. And if it's your very first experience and you don't want to follow a guide, then by all means, you could do that as well. But I definitely advise you to come here and maybe look at some other lists and just see some very, very good leveling starter builds for any brand new player. I learned the best way by just picking one and sticking to a guide. And it really helped me get through the campaign much better. It gave me a much better an easier understanding of the game when you're going through it. So shout out to Max Roll. Now our next tip is all about damage, right? Damage and defenses, okay? In Path of Exile, we touched on this in another video. You have your normal armor defenses, you have evasion rating, you have energy shield, and then you have your resistances here. Now when you're going through the campaign, I want you to not focus so much on resistances and look we got somebody wanting to buy something right now so let's go ahead and get them to come in so you have your resistances here you have your different armor evasion and maximum energy shield and then on offense if you select your skill you can see how much damage you're actually doing now when you're going through the campaign i don't want you to worry too much about your resistances these things are going to come over time so when you're looking for items that have you know, plus lightning resistance, plus fire resistance, plus cold resistance. It's always good to get those, but I definitely advise not worrying about this too much as you're going through the campaign. You're already gonna be pretty powerful going through the campaign and you don't have the actual negative 60 that is applied to all of your gear pieces or all of your resistances until you finish the game. So I want you to focus on 
damage as well as your normal defenses where it comes to armor, evasion rating, or maximum energy shield. And just focus on that whatever your build is. Now the next step is when you're going through the campaign is not to focus too much on completing every single thing unless you're a completist. You can see that I still have uh, quests here that I have not done because I don't need them. They're not particularly required for completing the campaign. They're essentially like a side quest that while I'm here, I could go up into this dirty job place, uh, search the mud flask for the entrance to the feeded pool, and I could kill this and just get some additional EXP and stuff. Now, if you want to complete everything in the game, absolutely do that. There's no reason to not do that. If you really just want to explore act by act and just knock everything out. Now, if you're just going through the campaign and you just want to go through it and complete the main quest line, you can 100% do that and you're going to level just fine. When you finish the campaign, you're going to roughly be around 65 or so by the end of Act 10, which is completing the entire campaign. So either way you do it, whether you want to complete everything or just follow the main storyline and stay on a normal path, or you can see that there's still a lot of areas that I have not I've either been to and I haven't got the waypoints or there's not a waypoint there because I just skipped it, right? Because I wasn't trying to complete those. I was only trying to complete my main quests and all the quests that I need to get my extra passive points for my skill tree. Now, in when you're completing quests in the campaign, you can do a backslash passive, excuse me. Nope, not whisper, not whisper. Do backslash passives. And you can see that these are all the quests Throughout the campaign, you get 113 total passive skill points and eight ascendancy points and 89 skill points from character level and then 24 from side quests. So you get one from completing Dweller in the Deep quest and one from Maroon uh, Mariner quest. And this just goes all the way down. You get two from Deal with the Bandits. So when I was going through, I was completing the main quest as well as just doing these side quests only. And that's why you guys see that I only have a lot of extra quests, you know, in certain acts that I have not completed. <clears throat> you don't need to complete everything to finish the campaign, but if you want to just to experience the full game, you can definitely do that. In the end, you're gonna be around the same level anyway. It's just a matter of how fast do you wanna get through it. In Path of Exile, you don't have to kill everything through the campaign. The reason I say this is because you can see that monsters are pretty scarce, okay? They're pretty scarce, they're not, as dense as they are in maps or other end game mechanics so when it comes down to your potions here it really hurts you if you're fast on the you know the trigger finger to pop these now the reason i say that is because when you use a pot you see i just healed myself even though i was at full health killing monsters is the way that these potions get or elixirs get recharged so for example let's go kill some monsters and i'll show you when you're killing monsters it just recharges them if i can find any there we go. So you see how my, my bar filled up? So that's the only way that you can refill them. Now there is bonuses here like I have on here, use when charges reach full, or you know if something happens, it can refill faster. But the only way to recover more of your mana pot for mana or your health pot or any of these other bonus elixirs or flasks is by killing monsters. So when you're going through the campaign, you know, you don't have to kill every single monster, especially if you're a quick trigger on your flask and, you know, being nervous about, you know, taking too much damage or not having enough mana when you're casting your skills, etc. I would definitely advise to try to just like in those two monsters in that case to just skip unless it's a density like this. This is a decent little density. You kill them, roll away. See, we just got a crude bow from my ranger. Now, if it's just one or two monsters, you could definitely probably just skip them and not worry about it. Like three monsters, if you really want to kill them, you can, but you could just run by it just to get through it and complete more of your main quests and main objectives faster. That's the only bonus tip that I have for you guys that's kind of controversial. You don't always have to kill every single monster. You definitely can just still gain a decent amount of XP just by killing the high density monsters getting through each of the acts in each of the levels or you know zones that you're going through in each of the acts of the campaign now my last and final tip guys is just to have fun really soak up everything you can in the campaign of path of exile 
the very first time I was just rushed through it because we wanted to get to the end game and just start to have some really good fun. But I will tell you that going through the campaign, it's it's a very rich story. It's very, very interactive. There's a like a lot of very cool things that you can do. And there's a lot of acts to explore. There's 10 acts total, all with different monsters all with different monster types, all with different characters that you meet along the way, especially at each of the home places, like each of the main, the Orthodox docks, like you meet so many different characters and there's so much dialogue and ways you can learn. And, and they actually teach you a lot of good things about the game. So if you don't want to read through all of the dialogue, you could definitely just talk to these people and just learn, buy and sell items from all of the vendors. Um, you really learn a lot from just interacting and doing everything in the campaign. So I definitely advise if you are going through it for your very first time, just to experience absolutely everything and have fun. Like the video guys, if you did enjoy it, comment down below. Let me know if you have been enjoying Path of Exile and where you're at in the campaign, if this is your first time going through it and what you think of it, let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.